Hello everyone and welcome back to my Transgalactic Trek in Elite Dangerous and here we are in the Engineer Update 2.1 and I am going to try and update my frameshift drive. I'm currently in a Cobra Mark III, probably not the actual vessel I'm going to go out exploring in but I want to try out uh, this whole Engineer Update and see what it's all about and this happens to be the ship I was in. So if you go into this menu, you can view engineers here. If you don't have any engineers showing up, you might have to look at your contacts uh, up here uh, when you press 2. And uh, you'll have contacts up there uh, with the engineers showing up. And so I've got two to choose from here as starters, I guess. Everybody gets these, I think. Uh, Felicity Farseer and Elvira Martuk and both seem to work on frameshift drives, that's good. And uh, this one requires me to deliver a meta-alloy in order to start things out. This one wants Suntil relics, three of them. I'm going to go with the metal alloys one, and I've already visited her, so uh, just uh, to see where she was, and I've bookmarked her. That's another feature that's been added in the new update. Uh, now, something that I've wanted for ages, you can go to your galaxy map and uh, you can bookmark things, systems, as well as specific locations. See bookmark location. And so under bookmarks, I have Farseer Inc., which is where that engineer happens to be. So that is the situation. The problem is getting this meta alloy. And I have looked online to find out where meta alloys can be found. And actually, going back to the galaxy map. We're quite a few jumps away from where we need to be uh, because the meta alloys are all the way in. See, so you, uh, you can see my little trek here in the Pleiades Nebula. It is around the star Merope, which is one of the Pleiades, and the Maya system, which uh, apparently was part of a community thing a while back. And so I'm going to head over there and try and find meta alloys. I don't know much about this stuff, and this is probably not the best ship to be taking a long trip in because A, I don't have a fuel scoop fitted right now, and B, it's got a relatively short range. Alright, so I'm here at Hovel Dock on my way out to Merope, and I've decided to pick up a fuel scoop. And there's a good opportunity to show off some of the new features that they've added as far as organization is concerned. It used to be quite a mess to upgrade your ship. I mean, all the stuff was very difficult to look at, uh, but now uh, they've put everything into categories, and so we've got utility mounts, where I've got the shield boosters, core internal mounts, the stuff that you absolutely need, frameshift drive, life support, power distributor, power plant, etc. And so here we have optional internal, and that's where I will want my fuel scoop. Um, I think I'm gonna dump a large cargo rack in favor of the fuel scoop. And so we see here, and everything is nicely categorized now. And so here we have fuel scoops, and uh, I want the best possible fuel scoop here. Uh, usually that's the most expensive type. Uh, do they, sh uh, they have a scoop rate there now, that's very helpful. It used to be that they hit a lot of numbers from us, so that's 0.25 tons per second. This one is 0.29 tons per, per second. We have to also pay attention to power draw and heating, but I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue. Um, I have quite a large uh, fuel capacity, actually. So I would like it to go pretty fast, but I don't want to spend too much on it. This is obviously not a good deal. This, I don't think the extra cost of a 4B over a 4C is worth it. That's 0.25, that's 0.29. And the power draw for this one's less. I think I'll take this one. Uh, yep. I'll take the fuel scoop. So, less cargo capacity. I only have 20 cargo capacity now, but uh, I've got the fuel scoop. And uh, just in case you're wondering, I do have the scarab in the planetary vehicle hangar so we can explore like that and I think that will be necessary to get the meta alloys advanced discovery scanner and planetary approach suite as usual and that sort of thing alright so I am going to be back on my way you saw I have about a 21 light year range and we're still quite a ways away 
from the Pleiades Nebula. Okay, so off I go. Alright, now jumping for Merope in the Pleiades Nebula. And actually you can see the nebula right there. Here we go. Frameship drive charging. Very nice blue-white star here. I don't think I've actually come this way before, so let me do uh, the normal exploration stuff. 29 new astronomical objects. Take a look at the system map. I think I read online something about the, the meta-alloys being on 5C. We can see it's all been discovered before, obviously, if it's such an important system. Now, of course, in the Pleiades Nebula, you'd expect people to have come by this way before. Okay, I have, unex I have not explored them myself, though, so there's a lot to be done. Uh, which one would 5C likely be? Uh, I think this must be number... F wait a minute. I guess this counts as one, two, three, four, five... I'm going to assume that this is going to be 5 and this is 5C. Let me make that my target. But it's unexplored now, so I can't verify the numbering or anything. So, off I go. They've got some new audio inter when you dock at uh, stations, so that's good. It's a uh, little bit better of a soundscape altogether when it comes to the stations. So again, all we really need is one meta alloy, but while I'm this way, I might as well pick up a few extra. There's also the matter of Maya Station, which I think I can actually buy. Uh, so Maya over here, there's a station, and there I can purchase the meta alloys if I can't find them myself. But first I'm gonna try and find them. There are apparently some alien remnants, alien structures, that we have to blast in order to get them. It seems like a pretty hostile thing to do, and I'm not too sure about that. Uh, seems like we might be starting something unpleasant by attacking these alien structures in order to get the meta-alloys. On the other hand, we might, might as well pick them up now, while we can, before the aliens decide to attack us, so we can be reinforced with the meta-alloys. I don't know. Uh, who knows. But for now, this is the goal. Now, if this is the place where we get meta-alloys, and it's so important, I'm surprised I'm not seeing a lot of other ships here. That's sort of weird. Makes me think I'm... Uh, I'm doing the wrong thing. Also, that doesn't seem like a planet up ahead, does it? It seems like a protostar is what we're really dealing with. A brown dwarf. There you go. It is Merope 5. And so that is the moon that I heard about. In theory, uh, I think the meta-alloy producing alien structures are all over this system. Not just on 5C, but since I read about 5C, I'm heading for it. Now, how the heck do I find a structure on a world like this? I have no idea. That is a huge question mark. I mean, this is a pretty big place. How am I supposed to find these alien structures? Uh, are they visible from, uh, from a distance? From space, for instance? I don't see any indication of that. I doubt it. Now, they've supposedly improved the terrains now. The procedurally generated terrains, which is nice. And also increased the frame rates at the same time. Used to be that I put a lot of burden on our, uh, our graphics cards. We'll see how it does. 
I don't know if there's anything particularly wonderful on this surface, though. Yeah. Feels like I'm in the wrong place, honestly. But is it just the wrong place in terms of where on the planet, or wrong place in terms of just a totally incorrect world? Well, I'm not going very fast now. It's only 280 meters per second. And, well, I don't see any sight of any anomalies. Uh, we, it would be really weird if there would be anomalies here. Let's try and get below two kilometers so we can start surface scanning. Well, this is a pretty featureless terrain. Okay, let me get it level and let's see. Just a map. Wait, there seems to be some sort of settlement there? No, I think that just means, hold on. Does it show something? No. We're there. There's no indication of anything. Little nor little or no surface metal content. Doesn't say anything about anything else. I don't know. Well, let me try and get into sort of an orbit to take a look around. Frameshift drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. I mean, maybe it only works if you're like, if you've got a mission or something. Okay, let's keep it at a five degree angle here. So I'm just going to look around. Nice to have a clear top to this thing. But I don't want to drop from high speed. I mean, it just doesn't seem likely that I'm going to be able to see something like this. Would be nifty though. If you could see one of these formations like this, that would be great. Here, looking for metamaterials, they're bugged. Come to Darnell's Progress in Maya and buy them there. Okay. Well, I believe that. Okay. I guess that's the plan. All right. Yeah, well, that was my alternate plan. I was looking at Maya, but I guess I might as well go for that. It's annoying that we couldn't just discover them organically, if you will. I mean, that's what the exploration thing is supposed to be about. But they're bugged, huh? Alright, well. Explains why there wasn't a flood of people around here. Okay, well, this is Maya. Let's scoop some fuel and then we'll proceed to Darnell's progress. Fuel scooping. Yeah, lots of contacts here. Fuel scoop disengaged. It's definitely the right place. Okay, which one is Darnell's progress anyway? Let me just ping everything. Obsidian Orbital was the place that they were delivering the meta alloys to before. Wonder if I should just go there. But that's that's probably a place to deliver them, not a place to get them. Forty nine new astronomical objects. Well, that's a lot of places to try and go to. I'm sitting in orbitals there. Darnell's progress. Is it on the surface? 
Yes. Good bet. Alright, so Darnell's progress it is. Oh, interdiction. Well, in a busy sector like this, you'd figure, right? I do have guns on this thing, but I've never used them. So... And I'm, I'm sort of more of a Han Solo type, so I want to get away from things, but boy, this one's tough. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, crud. Hull integrity compromise. Well, I don't like hull integrity compromise. Okay, do you have to flip me around like that? Do you have to? Do you have to? Okay, well that's nice of them. Scanning and everything. So who is this fella? There. Commander Evil Seed. No kidding. <laughs> Nothing you need, good luck. Alright, proceeding. Frameship drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. Well, all's fair. I think he's probably trying to uh, kill people for minimaterials, maybe. Why, why do I have no sound on my, my drive now? This is eerie. Yeah, my drive is no longer producing sound. So, uh, new update. I, I think there may be a few bugs here. Well, I'm hearing the engine sound from other vehicles. Lots of them. All those little uh, fireflies there. Fellow material hunters. Well, uh, shouldn't we uh, figure out what that is? Yeah. Not the low energy wake, the planet. Whoa, that's some weird stuttering there from that guy. I fix your engine. It's got to be a busy place to land too, huh? It's on the other side of the planet. No, not the... Not the wake. Well, hopefully I'll get my engine sounds back eventually and this is not some sort of permanent condition. Okay, approaching. Suddenly a different color to the landscape. Commander Tron Jeremy, that was the one who told us to come here, right? Yeah, it's a busy place, all right. Delay Fox Trot Lima Echo. So that's an example of the new audio that they've added. They've got more varied audio uh, clips when approaching stations now. It gives a better feel to the whole thing too. So once I get within 7.5 kilometers I can request docking as usual. Approach and there is a variety of different voices. Looks like it's fly straight into landing pad 5.
if you saw what happened to that condo, just drop one meta alloy in peace. Oh yeah, there's some serious pirates around here trying to kill people. Uh, we're in trouble. This is a dangerous place to be because everybody has to come here to get this stuff. Well, I, I hear the shooting going on too. Uh, maybe I should go ahead and get out of here while they're fighting somebody else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take uh, eight of them. It's risky. Well, let me keep my ten million credits. I'll, I'll get six. Okay, let's see if I can get out of here like that. I don't know. Let's uh, pick some place to go first. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense to go back to where we need to go, which is where the engineer is. Plot route. All right, route plotted apparently. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Up, on the gear. Full power. Okay, uh, mass lock, frame shift drive. You are clear to resume all navigation. Flight control signing off. Four, three, two, one, Alright, that was convenient because we were right lined up with the star system we were headed for. Otherwise, we would have to uh, try and escape the atmosphere first and then go around the planet to the right location. But this way, we could jump straight out, and that saved us from having to tangle with the bad. Well, I don't know if they were bad, bad, but bad enough. Alright, we are now approaching Farseer Inc., where our engineer will hopefully tell us the next thing we are going to have to do, because I sure don't think that. Our search for materials is over with with these uh, meta alloys. That's just to that's just to start things up. Next, we're gonna have to find other materials, possibly even more difficult to acquire. I mean, technically, we got the meta alloys from a market, so that's pretty easy. Hopefully, we're gonna have to find stuff on worlds and you know really hunt for it, but. I don't know how difficult that's going to be. I've never actually uh, tried to acquire materials. They've had uh, in situ resource utilization already. They've had uh, the fabrication stuff. Where is it? Here, uh, synthesis to make stuff with. But I haven't actually used that yet. Ooh, going too fast. Integrity Oops. That was not the approach I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too far away from Farsi Rink, though. Only 982 kilometers. But we probably need to go back into Frameshift Drive in order to get there. So if you were looking for a smooth, artsy sort of approach to planet, oh well. Waiting for the frame shift drive to cool down. Okay, let's try this again. Frame shift drive charging. Four, three, two, one, engage. Suddenly no engine sound. Again, the engine sound cut out. Uh, definitely there's supposed to be engine sound right now, but... Nope. Sudden lack of engine sound. Not too sure what to make of that. 
Now I've been to Farseer Inc. before and it is a pretty nice little uh, structure they've got there. Okay. Let us approach. You can see there's a tall spire there. I don't know what what that does for the structure. I suppose it makes it easier to spot, but Foxtrot Lima Echo, commencing automated flight control routine. Please observe docking protocols. Uh, what are they talking about there? No, no payout and then... Well, uh, something is going on in local, but I don't know what it is. They don't say commander in front of their names, so... Presumably that means they're not flying stuff. Probably better that way. All right, let's communicate. Access granted. Proceed to landing pad zero one. Now, where were those landing pads? It's an interesting place, like I said. Um, no, that's not a landing pad. Landing pads are sort of sticking out somewhere. Where were they? Oh, there we go. Actually, this approach wouldn't give a very good look at the structure, so let me actually come around so you can see everything that's going on here. So yeah, that's the structure and then there's this landing pad sticking out here. Pretty nifty sort of place. has been noted. That sounds ominous, but anyway, Starport Services. And then right in here we've got, well, let's uh, repair from my inadvisable approach to the planet, refuel all. And now the Engineer's Workshop. So, we, uh, we have to donate meta-alloys in order to unlock the specializations hasn't come up. Ah, oh, there, there's the portrait of Felicity. Okay, Felicity is a legendary explorer, just like, uh, just like I would like to be. She engineered her own improvements to her ASP Explorer early in her career. And anyway, that's the backstory. Donate one. Okay, so now this engine modification shield booster, but I'm really interested in the frame shift drive. Yeah, that one. So now this, uh, I don't know about the boot sequence, I mean that's the startup of the frameshift drive. And I guess this is the first one that we could possibly get, but how about just range? I, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's not really telling me the actual range, I would like it to actually tell me what the range effect would be. But we need these atypical disrupted wake echoes captured from high energy wakes with a wake scanner. So we need a wake scanner. Data recorded from a disruptive frame shift wake usually follow a familiar pattern. Okay. Chemical processors, component found in ships frequently used by haulage vessels, 
known to be salvaged from signal sources. So we're gonna have to do some salvaging. And we also have to collect arsenic on planetary surface surfaces or asteroids. I think that's purchasable. I think we could find those. So actually, let me actually jot these down so that I remember what I need. And I'll try and get a surplus because I'm probably not going I'm probably going to want an increased frameshift drive range on many different vessels. I I guess it's not really telling me what the range is. It shows me what seems to be an increased mass, uh, lower integrity, and more power draw, and an optimized mass. I guess I guess overall we get a four percent increased frameshift drive range, but I'm not really too sure how to read that. Shielded frame frameshift drive um, increases the integrity and thermal load, uh, improves the thermal load, but uh, decreases the performance of it and increases the mass. At least that's what I'm looking at. Nickel and shield emitters for that, because I don't think uh, I can view this screen from somewhere else. Well, pin blueprint. I don't know what that does. Pin, pin bru, pl, pinned blueprints visit the engineer's section of the cockpit status panel. So maybe, maybe I can see this information from within the cockpit when we leave, but it's better to just have a clear idea about what I need to do before I leave anyway. So anyway, this is the whole process of getting the meta alloys and accessing your engineer in new update of Elite Dangerous. The other improvements are in the UI and the menu system that they have now. There is also improvements in the mission system which I haven't shown and maybe I'll be doing some missioning in the next episode in order to get some more credits and maybe through the missions get some of the materials I need. I'm not too sure if that's possible or not. We'll see. And uh, we've already seen some of the audio improvements and well I will explore further and you'll be getting a few more Elite Dangerous episodes coming soon. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.